things women. Women. Women on ladies first. 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 Hey, this your girl 3D Nati, chilling with Jen from Brooklyn, and this is Ladies First. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fuck around with you, nigga. I'm in the building. I go by the name the of regime, 3D huh? Nati. Huh? Yeah. Ladies First. Oh, yeah, yeah, I do this shit for a living. It's me right here. While Twitter fingers was twittering and Amber Rose fingers was fiddling up in Ye's ass And Quentin Miller was scribbling up in Drake's pad I managed to skate past in my own lane with no motherfucking brake pads Shish, they say I'm doing the most Could move beige for bread, could give a fuck by the loaf Y'all discussing my posts like social media goons Been the best in the streets and gon' be the Jesus with Zoom Beefing with whom? The semi-automatic pistol on me Y'all be acting like you're real, but y'all be posing like Naomi Pockets fatter than McConan I was back and forth the Sony in Atlantic Didn't panic, still was killing shit like Brandy It's beyond my understanding Rap chicks get ran through like Runyon Canyon Hoping this gon' help they branding Meanwhile, they say I name drop too much I really know these rappers, y'all be on they cock too much How she say that she a great and she ain't drop too much Needed it big, at ease ho I been on my job and got more max than Steve ho Do not get it twisted cause I know Russell and Steve You can still get popped like a leaf ho Please ho, fuck sub tweets, I'm very vocal Speaking to subs to get your boys touched No Jerry Fogel, but Cameron on Get the house so your parents swarm Hit my dudes out the brick, they got more sticks than Amazon They'll do it for free, said it's not what you ate your talents on So from my hammock, one word, to have your family gone On uncle and granny gone, no hesitation Compared to me, Conrad Murray got more patience See, I'm tired of strippers and flippers Turn rappers, take shots in the ass These hoes so manufactured in real life, they hurting Broken, fractured, these hoes should join SAG I swear that they actors, my old shit Better than your latest shit All your dudes plagiarists and you dress like Jason Smith Getting beef and sending tweeting You run to the station quick I could be mainstream if I was fake and I ain't say this shit But I'm okay with it Shit, I'm really a great with it Bring me a goat, bet I cook them like a Jamaican bitch Before you see me fail, Queen Latifah would take a dick Lauren Hill would make a diss while Farrakhan eat bacon bits In other words, it's not an option What's poppin' with Potter? You and your partners was probably watching Blossom I've been a problem, making runs for presidents Like Mrs. Rodham, Hillary, talking presidents literally Who could get with me, nigga? Uh, it's too easy Your girl 3D not see from New Orleans Know that Ladies first, 3D Not T, you go Thank jump you from so Brooklyn. Much. My lord, we need to get an extinguisher in here. <laughs> bars just set the studio on fire. I'm ready to sit down with you and learn more about you. And I'm sure the people out there. You ready? Let's do it. Ladies first, may hop by my peoples at City Tech. Let's go. Ladies first, you go jump from Brooklyn. 3D Not T, you just killed that, girl. Thank you, thank you, thank yes. you. I'm so glad I finally have you here to sit down with you. I'm happy to be here. I am happy to do this. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm excited. Cause this is what it's all about. Like you embody also what Ladies First is. It's about boss women out here doing things on their own, making a difference, making an impact. So I'm very excited to have you here to learn more about you and um, your story. Because not only can you actually spit bars and perform, um, you have a, a deep story and you've been through a lot. So it's not, it's not so simple. I mean, I'm sure a lot of women out there, a lot of artists out there, have, you know, gone through a lot too. But um, I think your story is a little more significant. Mm -hmm. So let's take it all the way back, all the uh -oh. way back uh -oh. to young 3D Nazi. First off, how did you come up with the name 3D Nazi? I always wanted to ask you that. Nazi is just a nickname. They've been calling me this since elementary school. Just a, okay. you know, like a family name. Mm -hmm. But uh, the three D is actually I'm from New Orleans, Third Ward, the mm -hmm. Third Ward, New Orleans, and I grew up on a street called Delachey Street. Okay. So I put the three D in front of my name, like even having you say we have three D not T in the building, right? Mm -hmm. That's what my way of secretly getting you to shout out my area or those people that come from my section that may they don't they have not been up here to new york they don't they don't get a chance to come to hot 97 they don't get a chance to do some of the things that i do or that i have been doing in my career so with every accomplishment every move that i make that's my way to get people to acknowledge my my city and my area and where i come from see that y'all smart that's <laughs> what you gotta be to be a leader and a boss lady out here all right well let's learn more about you 
Uh, we're going to do Jen's Five, which is basically five questions or so where I ask you about your life. We get to know you a little more, okay? So you spoke about where you're from, New Orleans. Mm -hmm. How was that growing up out in New Orleans? Growing up in New Orleans, it, people, you know what's kind of weird? Mm -hmm. We hear stuff all the time. I was talking to a, a guy yesterday, and he was saying, oh, New Orleans, I, it's dangerous. I know it's fun, but we hear so many things about mm -hmm. it. But... It's like beautiful chaos to me. You know, I've I've been through hardships, but I feel like it made me every bit of who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, so fun times, uh, hard times, but uh, it's very passionate. Mm -hmm. Every the people in New Orleans are very very passionate. So you know, I I, I enjoyed it. Well, I was gonna say it seems like the community out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys have been through a lot. Obviously, Katrina. I'm sure you were around when Katrina mm -hmm. went down. And yeah. how was that like? Um, going through something like that, Katrina. The I mean, yeah, it was it was traumatic, very traumatic. Um, Katrina taught me not to take things for granted. Mm -hmm. um, one day, you know, everything was fine. It was life as as we knew it then, mm -hmm. and then everything changed. People lost everything. People lost their lives. You know, um, family members. Everything. People were displaced, and um, it, it really just taught me not to take take things for granted. Another thing about Katrina is if it didn't happen, though, I think that um, I would not be doing what I'm doing now mm -hmm. because my life was, you know, it was it was going into a different direction. So I really think even though it was a, a, a bad thing, mm -hmm. um, it, it definitely changed my life for the better. And you know? what, what kind of direction were you going into? Uh, was it down like a I was, spiral? I was just, I was I was. Um, just in the streets like okay. you know I wasn't as focused as I am now I wasn't I, I've always felt like I had a gift for music that was my love mm -hmm. but I come from a hard place um my parents were on drugs and you know I, I saw that as my only way to start making money because you know that the people in my neighborhood the ones who actually had money and were respected were the ones that were selling drugs mm -hmm. you know so um that's what I, I was doing before the storm Mm -hmm. So, you know, that changed my life because Katrina happened and I'm like, this is not who I am or what I want to do, mm -hmm. you know. So so besides the Katrina thing, I mean, did you always know that you wanted to be a rapper I and did. be in the hip hop business I and all did. that? So you I did. did. Yeah. At what age did you start realizing like, OK, this is what I want to do. I want to get started in this. Um, Maybe like 10. I, I think at like 10, I recorded my first song. OK. Do you remember what yeah. it was? Uh, yeah, I know it was horrible, <laughs> <laughs> but no, you know, it was very innocent. And yeah. um, I remember my first time actually performing, though. I used to always write in my, you know, my composition notebook and stuff like that. And my teacher, Miss um, Cox, my teacher, she uh, she saw me doing that. And I guess I was not paying attention or something. And she mm -hmm. whatever you're writing right now, I need you to come and share it with the class. And it was a rap. And I'm like, OK. Like, all <laughs> so right, I'm gonna go to the front and show yeah, you what I yeah, got. Yeah, so, yeah. So, so I mean, I've I've always always knew that I wanted to be an artist early on. Mm -hmm. I was, you know, and just thinking about the community out in New Orleans and stuff is, I'm sure there's a lot of musicians out there that's trying to do what you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, is it as big as it is out in New York? Because I mean, in New York, if you want to go see a, a showcase or you know see mm -hmm. someone spit, you could just go up the street and there's something going on. Is it like that out there in New Orleans? Did you have that access to go out and do that, or how did you start making your moves in this music game? Not as much. It's definitely not um, as big as it is out here in New York, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, they we have jazz music down there. We have bounce music. So there is the the music community is strong. Mm -hmm. Hip hop, um, they're starting to do more showcases and stuff now. But mm -hmm. um, I used to battle a lot, so mm -hmm. I would do. Oh, I, I would just, tell trust. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would uh, I would just hop out. I would see guys battling because it's, it's usually a bunch of men. Yeah. So I would just hop in a battle. That's 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 where I started to get my name in New Orleans. That's right, and that's why she's here right now <laughs> doing the damn thing. And, I mean, your music, it's... I read somewhere that people said it was a mixture between my favorite ladies, Foxy Brown, mm. Lauryn Hill, mm. and Tupac, which is says a lot about you and your music. That's, that's deep. When you hear something, someone say something like that about you, how, how does that make you feel? And also, what are some influences or inspirations that you had in your life to kind of add to your style of music? Um... I mean, whenever I hear people compare me to the greats, because they they are considered 
great to me. You know, mm-hmm. they're iconic to me. Tupac, Nas, uh, Lauren Hill, Foxy Brown, Mia X, all of these people, anytime there's a comparison, I'm just floored because you never know. When someone said, even if it's, it isn't, even if it is not somebody that I listen to, mm-hmm. If you're comparing me to that person and you're a fan of them, then it says something about me. You see something in me. So just hearing those names and being able to put be put in those same circles, those same conversations, it is is great for me. And um, Lauren Hill is one of my favorites. So anytime I hear that, I'm like, oh, you know, <laughs> anytime I hear that, it, it makes me feel good. And what about your personal inspirations? Who in your life has influenced you or inspired you? Um. I'm more inspired by where I come from and the experiences that I've been through, lived through. Um, I've been fortunate enough to make it out. My brothers, I'm inspired by my brothers all the time. They're so funny. I have two two brothers and uh, just just seeing, uh, being able to, to see that I can come from where I have came from mm-hmm. and being able to to speak through my music is, is, is my greatest inspiration. Just knowing that, uh, I can go further and I'm not what I used to be. Mm-hmm. You know? And that's some things about sometimes with people in the hood, right? They mm-hmm. feel like either they're not going to succeed, that's mm-hmm. why they don't try to, mm-hmm. or they, they're comfortable with where they're at. Yeah, You know what I'm saying? And being through what you've been through, I'm sure you've been through so much, but if you can pinpoint maybe the top moment in your life that changed your life versus the lowest moment you've had in your life, what mm-hmm. would you say they, that would be? Um, if you don't mind sharing. Yeah. Uh, I think some of the greatest things that that's happened to me are happening now. You know, I'm out, I'm, I'm an independent artist. I'm moving around. I'm putting out music. Uh, people are appreciating me for Mm -hmm. the things that, uh, that I create, Mm -hmm. you know, so those things, I can't just pinpoint one, you know, I did the BET cypher. I'm, I'm able to sit here with you. These, these things are continuing to happen now mm-hmm. as opposed to, you know, like I said, growing up in New Orleans and my father committed suicide when I was 10 years old. And you, to take this back, this conversation back, you heard me say I recorded my first song at 10 years old, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Well, actually nine years old, my father committed suicide. So like that is, I know that, that affected me so much. It changed me. And then right there when I lost something that was so dear and near to me, here comes hip hop. You know what I'm saying? So so that's why I take it as seriously as I do, because I felt like through everything throughout my life, hip hop has, has been the most consistent thing. It was always there for me. And you yeah. can hear it in your music, too. Everything you write, everything you say is from the heart and it's mm-hmm. deep. Mm-hmm. Would you say that going through what you did with your father is that low point in your life that you um, feel like there was just no no way out or just yeah no? I, f- I, f- I felt like that at the time mm-hmm. you know I'm a, I'm a girl I'm the only girl and I was daddy's little girl you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying so so of course that affected me in a way I can imagine just on a nine yeah. year old like how yeah. do you even how does, I can't even wrap my brain around it. Like, did you physically see him do it? Or? No, I didn't. I okay. Didn't, I didn't. But just to even go through something like that, I mean, I got to commend you to do what you do, coming out here, being strong, being the public eye and all that. Like, it's hard. Some people don't come back with something like that. Mm. I know personally because I've had people that I love that's done that. Mm. So I just got to big up to you for, for doing that. And I'm sure he's watching down from yeah, heaven. Yeah. Seeing you doing your thing out yeah, here. Yeah, absolutely. Being the boss lady you are. Because can I say something real quick? Besides being independent, you got to understand about Nazi or 3D Nazi. Which one, what would you rather me say? Call me Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> like she, she, she has her hands in on everything that she does. Not only is she independent, she has her hands in her music. She has um, a distribution deal that you have now with All Deaf Digital. Is that right? Well, are you imprint? That, actually, actually, that was um, a non-exclusive situation. So what was going on, what was so dope about it, I shoot my own videos. Mm -hmm. So I shot a video and put it online. It was a record called Switch. Mm -hmm. And um, Russell Simmons saw that, and Steve Rifkin saw it, and they have a company called All Dep Digital. Mm -hmm. And what they did was they they flew me in, and they wanted to license my content. Mm-hmm. So I would bring them content and, and we did deals like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's just one of the many things that she's done. I think also Timbaland's mm-hmm. camp also reached out to you, right? Mm-hmm. So what mm-hmm. happened with that? How come that never? 
I, I actually, I just, I decided not to, to sign. Mm -hmm. Um, I think at the time, and I learned so much. I learned so much from being out there with Timberland. He's a, he's a genius. I feel like he's a musical genius. Oh, he is. But, um, just some of the things in the contract, I, I just think at that time it wasn't, it wasn't right for me. Mm -hmm. You're doing so much now. I mean, five years now down the road, Nazi, where do you see yourself and what you're doing? Um, I I know I will still be making music. I know I will still be making music, but I would like to be doing um doing more content creating, uh directing. Mm -hmm. Um cuz you do direct your own videos. Yeah, yeah. Uh boss lady. <laughs> <laughs> but um I I I look up to the the um the women in hip hop who were able to transcend and not just like the 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 Queen Latifah, she she turned that into a whole brand. Like the uh, that's why I named the show after her, Ladies First. You know, like you know, these women, there there's a, a lot of women. These are business women, and um, in the future, there's so many things that I want to do, like directing and and uh and, and continuing to make dope music. And speaking of dope music, you're dropping a new project as well, right? You have a new project that's coming yes. out? Yes, I have a new project that's out right now. It is called The Songs That Didn't Make the Tape. Mm -hmm. With the regime, um, like I said, I, there was something that I wanted to say. There was a statement, so certain songs didn't fit. Mm -hmm. And I had 12 joints that I picked, and I put on this new project called The Songs That Didn't Make the Tape. And these are just as dope as the regime, I feel, mm -hmm. but um, they didn't make it, so now I'm putting it out. I love it. And there's going to be music videos with it, too? Absolutely. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Boss Absolutely. Lady Nazi, 3D Nazi. Yes. Thank you so much for coming through to my show. Thank you for having me. I feel like, you know, a lot of people are really, really, really going to get put on to you if they're not already. And um, she's a force to be reckoned with. So thank you for stopping by, ladies, first. Thank you for having me. We actually have a fan question, and they want to ask the artist. So let's take a look at the screen and check out the fan question for you. Hey 3D Nati, my name is Khadija and I'm such a huge fan of your work. I just wanted to ask you, how does someone like me who's a songwriter who's trying to break into the industry, who has the struggle, who knows the passion, how do I allow other people to listen to my words or just, just come about in the industry? I just want to know where do I go from here? How do I start? Have I even started? So just help me with that. That was a good question. It, it is. Um, I think the first thing is believing in yourself and it might sound cliche but you know the first place to start is actually knowing that you have something to say that that you have something unique to give to the world you know and once you realize that then that that'll give you the motivation you need I think it's it's not just focusing on um you know where do I start but when do I start and that's that's now right you know? gems upon gems from natty <laughs> 3d natty here on ladies first again i appreciate you for coming through thank you for having me i had fun good I had i'm fun. glad you yeah. did that's what i want the women to say when they come here yeah, and you know for all those out there too inspiring to do what you do you know you set a great example that you can uh but i'm not done with you yet <laughs> <laughs> can't let you go yet i do some games on my show are you are you in the games yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of, sort of, really? Yeah, we okay, play. cool. Well, there's a game I play on my show called This or That. Mm -hmm. And basically, it's simple. You just choose between two things. I might say heels or hats, and you say heels if you like heels. Mm -hmm. As simple as that. Gotcha. Uh, New Orleans Saints or New Orleans Pelicans? Uh, The Saints. Okay. Saints. More lit, Mardi Gras or New Orleans Jazz Fest? I love Mardi Gras, but... Um, I perform that jazz fest, so I I love jazz fest. I'm 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 more of a jazz fest. Jazz fest girl. Jazz fest, yeah. And what's Mardi Gras like? I always wanted to go there, but I'm wild. a little shook. Wow. Yeah, it's 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 real wild, but <laughs> but so it's that's a hard one. Okay. But, but jazz fest, you know, I love to be able to get on stage. So. All right. New Orleans staple: jambalaya or crawfish. Oh, crawfish. All day? Crawfish. Not jambalaya, though? I heard Crawfish. it's really special. <laughs> you can eat a whole pot of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crawfish. It looks like it tastes good, though. How do you eat that, though? You just peel off the skin and then just no. go in? <laughs> like, what happens? No, like the, the tail. You rip the tail off. It's it's savage shit. But No, I like that, though. Yeah. That's how you eat food. It's good. <laughs> it's good. New Orleans seafood. Okay. Um, Foxy Brown or Lauren Hill? Ooh. Um... 
that's hard. Uh, I I would have to say Lauren though. Final answer. I would I would have to say Lauren. Lauren. Okay. It depends on which day. Today, I, I say Lauren. <laughs> okay. <laughs> New Orleans King, Master P or Lil Wayne? Mm. Who really put on for New Orleans? Ooh, God. Um, Wayne, of course, for his, his lyrical ability. and uh, But I have to say Master P just because of how he pioneered the whole industry and, and how he... Uh, how he handled his business. Like, that was very inspirational. Plus, he's from the third war. Mm -hmm. Plus, he's from his family is right around the corner from where I grew up. So, I remember walking down the street a lot, um, trying to rap, hoping that one of his family members would see me. <laughs> so, <laughs> I got to say Master P. Uh, are you a homebody or up in the club every night? I'm, I'm more of a homebody. Um, yeah, studio body, I would say. Studio body? <laughs> okay, I can see that. Um, your kind of romance, skydiving date or romantic dinner and movie? Um, like excitement or chill? Uh, excitement. So, yeah, I would say skydiving. Oh, okay. I haven't done it before, but I, I'm, I'm adventurous, so, yeah. All right. Being a female MC is hard because your looks is the main focus or being taken seriously? I would say being taken seriously, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of the time too, they also focus on your Yeah, looks, they right? do. They do. So that one that one is a little bit of both, but we playing we're playing this or that. So <laughs> I gotta pick one. I was trying to trick you up, yeah. but it's not working. Okay. Um, in a song, what's more important? The delivery or the lyrics? Oh. Nowadays I feel people would say the delivery. But I feel and I've always been a strong believer that the content, the lyrics are more important. Mm hmm Yeah. I'm glad you're saying that. Yeah. Because some some of these people out here, I don't know what the hell they're saying in the yeah, songs, right? So, but the fl but the the melody, the flow, and it, you know, it may sound good, but I'm I'm one that I pay more attention to, you know, the lyrics. So I got a couple more for you, right? Which Timbaland beat do you wish you could have had? Jigga what? Jigga who? Or Hot Boys? Jigga what? <laughs> yeah. You on that beat though? <laughs> you should I try actually, that. I actually um Could something hot with with the with the song switch that we were talking about. Mm -hmm. I rapped over a bunch of Timberland beats, and I, if I'm not mistaken, did you do it on that one? I think one of them because I was just switching the records, all of the Timberland beats. So I think I may have rapped over that one. I don't know. Maybe I should go and watch and, and tell me. <laughs> and by the way, guys, if you haven't heard that record, she just spits for like ten minutes straight. It's yeah, crazy, yeah. fire, straight fire. All right, two more, okay? All right, the regime. Or guess who's coming to dinner? The regime. The regime. I think that one was a uh, a more full body project, well rounded, and like I said, it, I had a lot of things to say. I, I I'm very very proud of that. Okay. Yeah. And last question, all right? Mm -hmm. If you were stuck on an island forever, had to choose one person <laughs> to bring with you, <laughs> Russell Simmons or Steve Rifkin? Uh, they're both funny as shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I pro I would say. Hmm. Probably would say Russell. Russell? Probably say Russell, yeah. Russell probably have you out here climbing trees and doing yoga all yeah, the time, yeah, too, yeah. right? And get yeah. very deep for yourself. <laughs> I would say Russell. All right, Nancy, thank you so much for playing thank this with that with me. me. No, and thank you for coming through. And, and like I said to the people out there, you know, she's someone to watch. And her music's deep. Her music's dope. You're out here creating your own empire. And I just know that um, it's going to be something for you. Yeah, thank for you real. for sharing your platform. I think this is important, very important. So I appreciate, you know, being able to be on the show. That's right. Uh, let them know where they can find all your stuff, just in case um, they can look it up. 3dnati.com. Mm -hmm. uh, what I did was I put all my music there. I have the new video, Maria, that's out right now. You can get the project there. That's 3dnatee.com. And um, all of my social media is the same, Instagram, Twitter, you know, all of that, Facebook, 3 T. Make sure you check it out. 3D Not Jeff from Brooklyn, ladies first. I'll catch you on another episode next time. Know that.